Hello everyone. In this video, we'll start a new topic, uh, which is probability. Before I proceed with uh, the topic, I would like to just address about what motivated me to make videos on probability. Uh, I found that most of the courses and in most of the universities, this topic probability is a must in various courses. I had just addressed some few of the courses what I am actually teaching for. Uh, one is Chartered Accountants Foundation, Cost and Management Accountants Foundation, Company Secretary Foundation, and also for the bachelor's degree like BCom, BBA, BCA, etc. And also in some of the science subjects, BSc Mathematics, BSc Statistics, BSc Actuarial Science. And uh, these are the postgraduate programs wherein again probability is one of the topic. Uh, that is MCOM, uh, MBA, Master of Business Administration and Postgraduate Diploma in Management. And also it comes as a part of quantitative aptitude in many competitive examinations. So when I found that all these courses in various universities and professional institutions are covering this as a topic, it certainly motivated me. So I will make videos on this particular topic. So that's a brief reason for me to make these videos. Now let us move on to the topic, which is the probability. What exactly a probability means? It's a branch of mathematics, which concerns with uh, numerical descriptions about occurrence of an event. Means what is the chance of occurrence of a particular event? Generally, when you uh, write the chance of occurrence in terms of numericals, the number will range from zero to one. Zero indicates that there is no chance in the sense it becomes an impossible event. And when it is one, it becomes a sure event. Basically, it is about uh, probabilities about uh, something which is likely to happen. And what is that likeliness? how much it is, you are trying to measure it. So this comes basically when you are unsure about a particular event, then we talk about in terms of probabilities of certain outcomes, how likely they are, right? So how do we measure probability numerically? Suppose if I consider capital A as an occurrence of a specific event, then we write probability of that as, we read this as P of A. P of A is equal to small m divided by small n, where small m is the number of favorable outcomes to that particular event A. And small n is about all possible outcomes, the total number of all possible outcomes. Now let us move on to some of the terminologies which are being used in this probability theory. The first one, very first one is experiment. So what do we mean by an experiment? It is nothing but an operation that uh, results in a definite outcome. We can consider the general example which most of the textbook follows is about tossing of a coin. So when I toss a coin, I'm sure that I'm tossing one coin, I'm sure that either head will come or a tail will come, provided that coin is an unbiased coin. Means it should definitely have one side as tail and one side as head, and it should be a perfect circle. And when I toss, it should not stand, it should fall. It should fall very clearly so that only one side of the coin will occur. You call such coin as an unbiased coin, right? So, uh, once I toss a coin, I'm sure that definitely an outcome is expected. That outcome can be either a head or it can be a tail. So we can consider this particular operation of tossing a coin as an experiment. Then there is one more nomenclature called random experiment. 
what is random experiment it is basically an experiment wherein the outcome cannot be predicted in advance same example of tossing of coin itself we can consider even though i know that definitely an outcome will be there either a tail or a head but i am not sure what will come whether head will come or tail will come cannot be predicted in advance so a tossing of a coin can also be uh, considered as a random experiment then the next terminology is about sample space what do we mean by a sample space it is nothing but suppose if i consider coin tossing experiment which is a random experiment so in that what are the possible outcomes i am listing out all the outcomes so in the case of a single coin tossing only two outcomes are there it can be either a head or a tail so uh, shortly we say h or t so h comma t this will be your sample space for that particular random experiment now with some examples let us understand this uh, sample space in detail in our subsequent slides first example same example what we spoke about consider tossing a single coin then its sample space will be given by what how how do you write a sample space so as we had already seen the sample space in the previous slide the sample space is denoted by either capital s or the greek alphabet omega this symbol is called as omega let me write it there but for our convenience we will proceed with capital s only so if I, a single coin is tossed then our sample space will be s equal to as we spoke about either it can be a head or it can be a tail then we will move on to the next example uh, consider two coins uh, toss, tossing two coins simultaneously then what will be the sample space so our sample space see uh, first coin as well as the second coin both can give me the give me heads that is one possible outcome first coin can give me a head and the second coin can give me a tail provided we mark both the coins as number one number two like that right then first coin can give me a tail second can give me a head and uh, both the coins can give me tails also that means in this case the number of possible outcomes so let me write it number of possible outcomes that we denote it as n of n of when i say of i'm just opening a bracket of capital s means how many outcomes are there in the sample space capital s we may notice that there are four outcomes together this h h is considered to be a one outcome h t is considered to be another outcome like that so that means here n of s is nothing but four now we'll go back to the previous one in this case number of possible outcomes means in this case n of s there are only two outcomes so i will write it as two so this is about the second example now let us move on to the third one it is about tossing three coins simultaneously so how do we write the sample space so it is easy to if you follow this methodology first uh, let us write the sample space for two coins tossing experiment So first what we will do is we will write the sample space if two coins are tossed which we already wrote the same thing I will be writing h h I won't put now a comma I will just give some space then I will write the second one which is h t then the third one t h and then the fourth one t t let me repeat this in the second row also h h h t T H T T. Now, in all in the first row, all the letters I'll just edit with H. Then I'll put a comma now. And 
and in the second row i will end it with the tail put a comma so this will be our uh, all possible outcomes for a sample space of tossing three coins at time simultaneously so this way it is easy for us to write without missing any of the outcomes now let us proceed with a different example which is a die so how a die will look like it is like a cube so it will be like this so it will have uh, what do you call six faces each face sorry each face will have some dots means like one dot then one face will have two dots third face will have three dots and then you have four dots then you have five dots six dots like that right so uh, means if it is having one dot you consider that as one if it has got a two dots you consider it as two like that so now in this question in this example uh, we are considering throwing a single die then what will be the sample space as we had spoken since it has got six faces and each face will have a number of dots uh, starting from 1 to 6 our sample space in this case will be either 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so that means in this case the number of uh, possible outcomes in the sample space will be 6 and the previous case also let us write that is for three coins tossing the number of all possible outcomes that is n of s here it is 8 we may notice the first one it is 2 second one it is 4 uh, third example it is 8 means for a single tossing it is 2 for two toss two coins tossing single coin tossing it is 2 and two coins tossing it is 4 and three coins tossing it is 8 uh, so i can write this as this 2 can be expressed as 2 to the power of 1 and uh, this 4 can be expressed as 2 square so what we are trying to do we are trying to arrive at some pattern basically this can be written as 2 cube so i can say in general a note in general if we toss if we toss n coins simultaneously simultaneously then uh, the number of all possible outcomes all possible outcomes will be 2 to the power of n so we are trying to generalize it okay now let us proceed again with our die experiment so here we understood that there are six outcomes so we are writing n of s as 6 so let's move on to the next example which is about two dice you may note down this plural of die is dice right okay so how do we write the sample space so let me show it i will just open a big flower bracket first die can give me a 1 second die also can give me a 1 first die can give me a 1 second can give me a 2 likewise uh, first die can give me a 1 and it uh, second die can give me a 6 then first die can give me a 2 second can give me a 1 first can give me a 2 second can also give me a 2 and so on first die can give me a 2 second can give me a 6 likewise and so on first can give me a 6 second can give me a 1 Uh, first can give me a 6 second can give me a 2 and so on first as well as second both can give me a 6 so if we look into actually it has each row has got six outcomes and there are totally six rows that means 6 into 6 so you have totally around 36 outcomes so in this case i can say n of s is equal to 36 so the previous uh, example that is example 4 we have single die thrown 
So it is giving me a result of a total number of outcomes as six. In this case, it is giving me a total outcomes as 36. So again, we can try to generalize. I can write this as six to the power of one. And this 36, I can write it as six square. So again, we can generalize this note. In general, if n dice are thrown simultaneously then the number of all possible outcomes all possible outcomes will be so since it is if it is one die we got six power one if it is two die we got six power two so if it is n die we will be having six power n so there are some more terminologies in probability which we will see in our subsequent subsequent videos till then see you all in case if you feel that the contents are easy to understand and if you find it useful I request you to like, share with your friends and also subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot.